Today we want to talk about uh, another tool in the logic and reasoning and proof toolbox. It's chapter 2.4 and it is deductive reasoning. <clears throat> We're going to go back and contrast and compare it to inductive reasoning, which was, let's take this thing down off here, which was uh, <clears throat> one of the first things we studied in, in reasoning and, and proofs. Inductive reasoning as we found out, uses patterns, because we had patterns, number of patterns, whatever else, similar situations, examples, to arrive at an educated guess that we call a conjecture. Okay, what's the next thing going to be? What does this look like if this is the pattern, if this is the situation, this follows the similar situations, what's going to happen? And we call that a conjecture. What is your best guess? at what's going to take place. Looking at the circumstances, what does it look like happened? So we're taking some specific information and we're coming up with a general concept of what took place. Specific examples and coming up with a general concept and idea. On the other hand, opposite to that is deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning uses facts rules, definitions, and properties to arrive at a conclusion using logic. What's the difference? Patterns, similar situations, and examples versus facts, rules, definitions, and properties of things. The rock weighed 10 pounds. The rock is made of iron. Facts. It was 10 o'clock when the car drove by. Rules. The rule says you must stop. Definitions. Definition of something. What is this? Okay? to arrive at a conclusion using logic. And that goes into the logic statements we, we came up with, the logic, the truth tables, the conditional statements, the compound statements, the conjunctions, the disjunctions, truth tables, truth values, all of that. Conditional statements, so we've been talking about the converse, the inverse, the contrapositive, and the truth tables that go with every bit of that what we're talking about when we use deductive reasoning. Okay? Inductive reasoning, taking pattern similarities to come up with a broad conjecture or guess at what took place. Deductive reasoning uses facts, figures, very specific things that come up with a very logical, pinpointed, this is what happened. Okay? Deductive reasoning from specific to general. Deductive reasoning from general to specific. Very specific things that took place. Okay, there's a couple of tools that we can use in our deductive reasoning area. It's called the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. Okay. Law of detachment and the law of syllogism. Okay, that's an S there. All right, law of syllogism. All right, and we're going to discuss these laws. Two tools in our ability to use deductive reasoning to solve problems. And uh, let's go to the first one. Let's get this out of the way and come back to it. The law of detachment. The law of detachment, I'm going to write it out symbolically, and then we're going to put an example to it. And we're going to put a truth table to it to prove to you it is exactly what it says it is. It says this, if P 
then Q is true and P is true, then Q is also true. If the comment or if the conditional statement if P then Q is true and P is true then Q is also true. Well that looks like a very complicated statement. They in fact are not stating anything except the very obvious. Prove it to you. Let's look at the truth table for this thing. Truth table for this thing is very very simple. We got a P and a Q. P, Q, we got P, then Q. Let's draw our lines. Set this up standard. T, T, F, A, ta, ta, fa, fa. T, F, T, F. Now we know if they're both true, then this statement is going to be true. We know if they're mixed, and the conclusion is false, then this is going to be false. We know if they're mixed and the conclusion is true, then this is true. We also know that if they're both false, this is true. Now, let's look at this real carefully. If P then Q is true, so which ones are we looking at? This one, this one, and this one. And P is true. So we're looking at this one and this one. So if this is true, which is those three, and P is true, well, that, that's... What's the only one that has both? It certainly isn't that one. It certainly isn't that one. And it certainly isn't that one. So the only thing we're looking at is what? We're only looking at the situation where P is true. And Q is true. So this is not a stretch. Alright? What we're actually saying is, uh, duh, if P and Q are both true, you can just say Q. Well, what's an example? <clears throat> if there is a pep rally, then it is Friday. So you look at that day and you go like, there is a pep rally today. And it is Friday. Oh, it's Friday. It's no big deal. If there's a pep rally, then it's Friday. Is that true? And is P true? Yeah. Well, the only time that can happen is if both of these are true. Okay? So that's the equivalent or the same, logically equivalent or the same thing as coming in and saying, oh, wow, it's Friday. Got it? Now, Go over here and write this another way. Let's use P as you live in US. Q, you live in North America. All right? So what are we going to say? If you live in the U.S., then you live in North America. I live in Decatur, Texas. Is that in the U.S.? Yeah. Then I live in North America. So that's the same thing as you coming in to me and walk through the door and go like, Oh, Good Smith, you live in North America. Yep, I do. I live in Decatur, Texas, which is in the U.S.A., USA is in North America. So this statement, if P then Q is true, and Q then Q. Alright? This 
this is true, whoops, that's wrong, isn't it? Almost got away with that. If P then Q is true, and P then Q. Okay? That's how we write that. One other way to write it. Alright, symbolically is this way. Alright? Which is basically what we've done right here. This is symbolically. If P then Q and P then Q. Okay? Same thing here. If P then Q and P then Q. If you live in the U.S., then you live in North America. Do you live in the U.S.? Yeah. Then you live in North America. Simply the same thing as saying that. Okay? Law of detachment. All right. <clears throat> Let's look at the other law, the law of syllogism. Now, the law of syllogism is what I call the transitive law of conditional statements. It basically ties a bunch of conditional statements. If conditional statement A is true, and then conditional statement B is true, and conditional statement C is true, and conditional statement D is true, and on and on and on, then I can say, oh, if A, then Z. Now, one of the most uh, famous and popular uh, examples of this would have to be the uh, direct TV ads. And we'll see those in just a few minutes. Syllogism. Okay? Here's what the law of syllogism says. <clears throat> it simply says, if P then Q and Q then R, then P then R. Huh? Well, if this is true, and this is true, then I can just eliminate this right here and go straight to there. Let's do this. P is I live in Texas. Q. I live in U.S. R. I live in N.A. So, let's write it. If Texas, then I live in U.S. And if I live in U.S., then I live North America. Then, if I live in Texas, then I live in North America. So if this first one is true, if I live in Texas, then I live in the U.S., and if I live in the U.S., I live in North America. If those two statements are true, we can basically just get rid of this portion here and get rid of this portion right here and go directly to this and this and simply say, wow, if I live in Texas, I live in North America. I think that's a pretty clear indication of that. Now, what we're going to do here in class is I've got this queued up. And we're going to watch some of these uh, direct TV commercials and let you see how they string these together. Now, 
some of y'all think that the ads and things, they're just simple ads and somebody came up with a clever idea. I'll tell you something. These people know what they're doing. They string this stuff together. They use the logic rules that apply. They know what they're doing to get you to listen to and to automatically make the connection between this. If you have this first statement, Okay? And the first statement in the DirecTV commercials is, if you have cable, then your life begins to get worse. And worse, 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 and down here. And basically what you do is you connect the first, if I have cable, I'm going to end up with this. So don't end up with this, get this. They string all these together, funny situations, tragic situations, whatever else, and you get sucked right into it. They're not the only ones who do that. All right? The world knows how to use this stuff. You get out there, they know how to use it. They're going to use it. You get hit with it all the time. They're educated. It's time for you to get educated and see what they're doing to you. See how they're saying it. And for you to use it. Now, we're going to use it in geometry to prove things. It's not the only way it's used. It's used in courtrooms. It's used in investigations. It's used in advertising and marketing. It's used in justifying your job. It's used in a lot of different ways. So, welcome to deductive reasoning. Taking facts, rules, definitions, properties. Coming up with a conclusion using logic.